that uh, is hiring and make their models, you can talk to them and find out like what exactly they need for their engine. Are you making this for uh, iPhone, PC, Xbox 360? And for uh, most of you don't know, uh, when you're working with iPhone apps, you have to uh, work with a certain poly count uh, that can't be too high or you're going to have uh, some issues with memory and whatever the case may be. When you're working with something like Xbox 360 or PS3, you can go a little higher. Um, when I'm talking about higher, we're talking about uh, triangle count, uh, 20,000, 30,000 is usually the norm. But for something like an iOS, uh, one second. Something like an iPhone, you could you, you have a limit of maybe like 3,000, 4,000 to 5,000 triangles. So the way I go about taking concept art integrating it first with ZBrush is I have to get this into ZBrush. And the fastest way I can get this in there is if you ever go into ZBrush under your, this window right here, if you look under the tool palette, there's this file here called the SVREF PSD. It's basically a Photoshop file where you can like put any of your front or side art into it and uh, essentially bring it right into your ZBrush uh, menu. So uh, I'm going to load Photoshop. And since we have like two hours in this whole uh, meetup or something like that, uh, something like this usually takes about <laughs> a week. So I'm going to do this whole pipeline in two hours. So a lot of things I've already pre-done. Here's that Photoshop file that I saved off of ZBrush. Open it in Photoshop. Open the ruler and drag like a quick plane right at the bottom here. Start scaling here so it kind of lines up with Draw an arrow at the top of his head and know where this is going to go. I'm going to bring the front there. Even though it says back, it's actually the front, so don't get confused. You want to draw a line directly at the middle of that circle that you see there. see the middle of that circle, put in transparency so you can line it up. Nudge it with the arrow keys and hit enter when you're done. Uh, I see that the right image isn't lined up with the blue line, so now that I see that's there, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Call it a uh, halt something. Halt left. Like ZBrush. Now, next to that white SV ref PSD is your actual uh, shadow box. And these are the files you're bringing into ZBrush so we can load the image. I'm going to drag it down, load into your ZBrush background. On your tool palette, if you look under texture map, you'll see your file there, but it doesn't have the default. Reference. So you're going to go and see your texture library, import, desktop, and look for the whole. Which I need to Right there. So you go back into your texture map window, 
like that, find a thing, and now fall out. There you go. Hope he's in your screen. So as you can see, you can fumble around it. Now, there are many ways to do this. Is you could actually also go with the pipeline of using Maya to create your box mesh, but uh, I found this method method to be one of the fastest, uh, especially in the pipeline when there's a lot of characters in the game studio. So uh, I tend to use Z spheres a lot. So to work with that, we have to go into your subtool palette, click a pen, Z sphere. We ask questions. Of course. Um, do you usually get like spec files where they're not in like a T pose? Absolutely. You do? Yeah. And how do you read it? Uh, you kind of have to just do it by eye. If if the if the client gives you a character that is not an orthographic, okay. you either have to do it where you have a double monitor and you just have to work off that. Uh, but generally, if you do get an orthographic uh, picture, that's kind of like a blessing. So uh, it also depends. <laughs> if it's not a very good concept part, then you kind of have to like wing it and see what the director will say. You know? So if the hands are at the size, you don't have a problem with uh, winding it? Yeah. I'm going to yeah. show you. I'm going to show you. Yeah. You can repose it. Yeah, oh, I'm going to show you. Like, okay. Transpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not going to model like this. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay, select the Z sphere. Make sure we're in uh, symmetry with the X key. Always have your draw size at one because when you're editing Z spheres, you never want to have your uh, draw size too big. Scale them down. Up. And again, if I'm going too fast, feel free to ask me questions because uh, I don't know if you guys know some stuff I'm doing. How come you don't work in like a base mesh that's like a huge? Like, why do you use Z spheres? You can. But I, I'm doing the whole, I'm doing this uh, concept for a reason because it's not a, a normal anatomy. Uh, like, like if you notice, his kneecaps are not even like the same distance as a normal human. His arms are way below his groin area. So if I was using a normal human concept, then I'll just use it straight up. It's basically like found on my scene. This is how I start every humanoid flyhead is I create three Z spheres, two on the top, two on the bottom, and one at the top that connects his neck to the head. Right up. And the preview just an A button. two balls in his eye because uh, they need a lot of um, I'm not worried about too much about uh, matching the shape of the body because when we convert into the skin, I'm going to show you how to uh, shape that really quick. You just want to get everything close enough. And hit Alt-S. Solo mode that hides anything that's uh, visible in your subtool palette. Hopefully, uh, drawing some finger geometry. Again, I don't care what the color is. Here, you unify skin, adaptive skin menu. Make adaptive skin. Click that. We 
you see it right here. We're going to go to append or insert on your skin model. Move the skin clean the disease sphere file. You don't need it anymore. Of course, always save. A lot of people like to work with Dynamesh uh, on the, the newer releases of Pixel Labs with ZBrush, but uh, when you're working in a pipeline, you always want to make sure you have subdivisions, so you will always uh, know that someone like me will never use Dynamesh because uh, it's easier to control form when you have uh, lower forms. And when you work with Dynamesh, your mesh is pretty much liquefied into like a big putty, and it's incredibly hard to move uh, forms, especially when uh, a director will say, I need you to change uh, a certain part of the body because it's too this or that. And that's one of the reasons why I always work with uh, It's easier. But is this still like pre-production or? No, this is, this is gonna, this is pretty much going to, uh, I'm pretty much covering the entire uh, pipeline from concept to game. <coughs> Oh, that's a that's a totally different story. You're dealing with 2D concepts. That's that's a no. no. I mean, like you can. I mean, I know some people use uh, ZBrush for the concept as well. Like they use the to, to. Well, you can do that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But there, like, if if you are someone that's really good at ZBrush, yeah. by all means use Dynamesh. Like if you know you're that good, I can be honestly, uh, I can be honest about it. I'm not that. Good, that good <laughs> as a sculptor, where I can work perfectly with anatomy and stuff. I always mess up. I always have to go back and change forms. The director will always see something wrong. All the artists will see something wrong. You always got to go back and fix it. That's why I always work in subdivision. Right. So to answer your question, we're not going to work in relaxed pose. We're going to move these arms up. Now if you bring the draw side back up. Just nudge everything. Good. And if we go, uh, those of you who don't know how to do Quick select, you turn on the poly frame. We have the ability to hide certain meshes while we sculpt other ones. So I'm going to quickly run down and separate them so I can easily model them without them being there. Those of you who are interested in seeing this, uh, some menus I've created uh, are basically tools that I have used pretty much for the last six, uh, five years since I uh, started using ZBrush. Uh, I'm more than welcome to give you guys the user interface I'm using. Um, I have one through nine as all my, my brush strokes that I use all the time when I'm doing my modeling. I also have my menus here all set up, and I have a special menu that I have set up that always is being used when I'm modeling, and I can give it to you after this meeting. Tool, just pump up a bit. 
get to a point where I know that it's starting to drag, and I'm going to go to another file that uh, kind of speeds up the whole process. I know this can be very uh, boring to watch. <laughs> sit this whole thing. This whole process of me making this uh, game model only took me about three days to make. Uh, at home, so I'm going to show you some steps. Game? Yeah. Well, for yeah, off our Yeah. One point six mil. And the uh, game mesh you will see at the end. I only got them up to uh, twelve hundred plus. Mm. Full like we'll detail everything with maps and what's going on. Yeah. Do you, like just decimate the mesh and then. Not five minutes ago. Not. You just want to like blow something. I'll show you. I'll show you some some cool stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna load up a file that I did already that shows. I'm already a higher process. Did you ever find yourself using the uh, retopology tools? I will show you the fastest one ever. Okay. This is the final one? No, no way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be worried about this. So, um, I got them to look about like this. As you can see, the model has some good topology in it, and for the reason being, I was able to, I have to get to a certain point with Z-Spheres, um, it's not going to be in your best interest to work with that same topology when you're getting higher and higher subdivision. You have to get to a certain point, once you get the form, to bring it into a topology tool, so you could like uh, even out the topology, as well as when you start to subdivide them, uh, you won't have any trouble when you start to, to, to sculpt them. You know what I mean? So, I'm going to show you a quick method I like to use. Uh, for those of you who don't know 3D code, it's probably my best friend for creating not only topology, but also clothing, as well as armor, accessories, you name it. Alright, so we're going to call him Hulk, ref, 